Hello, this is Brendan, and in this episode I'm going to do a time lapse and try to finish up this um, digital painting I'm working on here. This is part two in a ten part series where I'm working on Greek mythology. And so the first one was the six armed uh, monster guys, and that's called the Geganes, and that's in a previous video, you can look it up if you haven't seen it yet. And this one is called uh, Charon or Charon. I don't know what it's called. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's this guy here. And I already started this in another video. And then I don't remember if I, I think I painted it off video. I don't remember. But anyway, so now I got this far with it where I painted the foreground. And in the time lapse, I'm just going to work on the uh, the background areas, which is these uh, characters here and I'll have to make more ocean or lake back there and then the uh, the background okay so something I wanted to uh, review real quick was uh, that color let me see if I can go back a few steps yeah there it is this is the original color that I painted and I used the if you go into the colors menu the uh, brightness contrast just to raise the contrast up a little bit to see how it looked and it was like this and at first I didn't like it but I poked around a little bit with the color and and I, you know I just played with it in this mode and I said well how how can you judge really because what happens is your eyes get used to things no matter what the case is so I might since my eyes were used to the previous version which is this when I moved it to this version and my eyes got used to this and I'm sure you can probably tell since you, if you've been looking, you know, at the screen for a little while now. I'm gonna go back to this one, and that definitely looks bland now. It looks dull. It looks kind of faded, right? Now, it's not bad to be faded, but if you're going for a somewhat realistic look, then what can you do? So, one thing to do, you know, well, I mean, when I say what can you do, I mean, what can you do to make sure that it's not faded? Because your eyes get used to whatever you're looking at, they adjust. It's like if you go out at night time and at first it seems dark, you can't see anything, but your eyes eventually will adjust and you'll start to see the light and things. So the same thing happens if you make if you use like faded colors. So the best thing to do with that obviously is to choose a color in a black area and to see how black is it. And it's very far up in the uh you know, it's all the way up, but it's not all the way over to the left. So it's not pure black. Um however, do you want to use pure black that's a big question there's all these lights going on around here um, should it actually be like that if you're trying to be realistic well I think I just can't help saying even though they're supposed to be in like a dark area and there's all these lights bouncing around because th this isn't supposed to look like normal ocean it's supposed to be like spiritual kind of glowing uh, waves and stuff and but despite all that let's just look at a photo um, which I had here, some models to help me with the, um, and by the way, <laughs> I always cut myself off, but I found out, I thought this was a photo. If you zoom in, it's actually a painting, like a really good painting. That's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So, um, if you look at these, I mean, it's obvious that the black areas are just pure black. You don't even have to use color selector, but you know, when I say black, I mean like the shaded areas, right? So this one here, I don't know. It's really hard sometimes. If you look in here, it's not all the way to the black, but it's pretty much there. And the same goes for the rest of these. You can just feel the contrast, right? The white areas, let me see how white they are. It's a very light gray, not all the way over. And that's normal, unless it's like really bright sunlight. But on this guy, and he has a different kind of skin too. He has, you know, he looks like he's been working out, so he could be sweaty and therefore oily so he actually does go over to the pure uh, the highest value and almost without saturation of color whatsoever and so that's um, you know a very high value and he has not so much a wide range of uh, blacks right in, in the shade areas but he has light coming from both sides he might have a window uh, behind him on the left and something over there and uh, well that's all I can guess about that so, see if we go up really high now, that's obviously what I'd call like, you know, getting comic book, a little too comic book, even though obviously, you know, a good comic book would look 
even better than that, but it has, I'm not, you know, insulting comic books, but what I'm saying is, uh, it's not supposed to look like it has these thick black pen and ink lines. But that is okay, right? And from that, I, I, I think it's okay, and then when I go back, it, it seems dull again. So I'm just using that plus the uh, color picker technique here. And it's still not as dark, it's not pure black, but I can still go in. That's why I made this extra layer. Whoops. I had an issue there. I can't move that? Yeah, I can. Okay, we're good. And um, I could use pure black here to work on this. And then when you put the pure black in there, look at, you know, what a contrast it makes. So that helps you to judge all these little tricks. See, and should it be pure black back in here? Well, it should definitely be a little bit darker. So I don't know. These are things to keep in mind. I might work on it later. So that's all I wanted to say about that. I think it looks a little better with that. You can always, you know, play with the colors. That's why we're digital painting. We have these tools available to us. So might as well use them. Um, and I got some cave... Uh, reference here that will help me to work and I, I had to note these like super caves this came from um oh god I, I can't forget I can't remember what was the uh <clears throat> I wanted to give reference uh the name of I'll, I, I'll put it on the screen <laughs> I'll put it on the screen but it's a uh, it's very what's the name of that uh, Smithsonian, I think it was, it was Smithsonian Mag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. SmithsonianMag.com. It was a magazine for Smithsonian, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, uh, and I just wanted to point out, look, this is, there's a guy there with like a hard helmet and a, and a safety jacket or something. How, look at how small he is as we zoom out. That's how big this cave was. I searched for expansive cave and I really love this, um, Bring it on this layer, this like the mossy area coming here. Oh, that's awesome! And the way the light comes in, that is really good. And the shape of the caves. I was thinking, can I incorporate some of that into my illustration here? Um, you know, could there be a hole in in the top somewhere and just allow for? Um, why is that? Oh, that's not a signature there. And just allow you know some light to come shining in, but that would also like really complicate things. I might see what I can do. I don't know. All right, so that's it. Um, and then I'm going to go into time lapse. And in the next video, I'm going to do a review of all the stuff I did this year, 2017. And we'll see you soon. And I hope you enjoy the time lapse. Have a good day. <clears throat>